Good morning, Louisiana. In August, I signed a three-year contract in Nevada. And nobody thought it's sitting out that amount of time I'd be standing here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, taking on the role as your executive director. And I am honored and pleased and privileged to be here. It's been an exciting time over the course of the last 12 days. I've enjoyed it immensely. I'd be remiss at this time I didn't thank, obviously, the executive committee, Mr. Bonifay's leadership, the committee, search committee's uh, leadership under Mr. Geis, and Mr. Jimmy Anderson for the role that you've played during this transitional time, and the staff for how you've been able to handle this transition and I think in a somewhat of a seamless manner, and I'm going to do everything I can to continue to keep that transition as seamless as possible during this uh, very historical time in the LHSAA. Hard to believe that we are standing here today at some crossroads, important crossroads, as you all know, for the LHSAA. With the gentleman standing in front of you, you don't even know. And I completely understand that, and uh, would feel probably the same way if I was sitting where you are. But I've had enough opportunity now in traveling across the state that I think I have somewhat of a grip with at least one hand right now on some concerns and issues and some historical perspective of where Louisiana has been, where you are now, and where you'd like to go. As your executive director, it will be my charge to establish the strategic plan to handle all of those I just mentioned and take it into consideration each pocket of information and including all of you to do that. I do not have all the answers, but I have some experience and I'm dedicated to education and I've dedicated to education-based athletics and activities for kids. Statistics show that those students that are involved have higher grade point averages, better attendance, overall good, positive influences on our campuses. But it doesn't mean that there's not a few knuckleheads along the way. We've all experienced that, but we all know that for the most part, it's what we love to do, and we have that passion, and I want you to know that your executive director has that passion, whether I'm working for students out west, or I'm now working diligently for students in the south. I've told more most of you as I traveled across the state and saw a lot of you, and I will say I have met a lot of you, but I don't know a lot of you. And I think we have that same commonality. You don't really know me either than the few snapshots that you've got of me through the course of this tour of cities, as I like to refer to it. The hospitality, the cordiality, the courtesies, the mutual, collegial, and respect, professionalism, y'all were off the charts. And I want to thank you for that which leads me to believe that you're ready to take and move forward, which you've heard me say before, with some ideas and things that what we feel will be best for the students here. I mentioned in those tours that I was gonna be gathering information. And over the course of the tour, I've gathered that information, and guess what I'm gonna to do today? I'm gonna to share some of that with you, because I've also mentioned, as in Mr. Bonifee, about transparency. I wasn't just gathering to go into this silent little fold or someplace. There was individuals that wrote to me and asked that I not mention their names. Okay. But at least I was able to get some honest information and start building that trust from the time you get sent for that email or you picked up that phone and called and I took your call or the eyeball to eyeball that we've had over the course of the last 12 days not to exclude anything that we've done the last two or three days here. <coughs> Believe it or not, the bulk 
of what I have heard from the majority of you had really nothing to do with the playoffs. For those in the back, can everybody see what this is? Everybody have one of these, know how to get to one of these? That's your handbook. The handbook, all these rules and regulations in here were approved by this body, if I'm familiar with the process in which you do that here in Louisiana, which I think is an incredible process. Believe me, coming from a state where the legislature helps make these rules, we have people that are legislators that are involved in education, and they're our friends, not our foes, but these are principal and coaches and executive committee member rules and regulations. What I'm here to tell you is these are not suggestions. These are what we're supposed to abide by. And from what I'm told, the consistency of application of these rules in here from schools to schools has been inconsistent. And when the inconsistency has been reported, there has been failure to follow through on that through the LHSAA. Now, from this point further, I'm wearing this jacket that doesn't have the LHSAA logo on it today because I'm a guy still from Nevada that you've hired here to bring in from the outside to put that extra different set of eyes on stuff. And that's what I'm bringing for you today. So please, as I move through this list, it's not throwing stones. It is just information that you have given me and I'm not making it up. The policy man, this book right here, some believe if we would just abide by this, we wouldn't be having the problems that we have right now in regards to where we stand with the playoffs. And I want those coaches, principals, administrators in this room to know there's a lot of noise and it seems to all be about football. But I want the coaches and ADs and others in this room to know that we have 20 plus other sports in this state and I haven't lost focus on those either. Sensitive to that piece as well. 90,000 plus participants across our state. They're not all playing football. But I understand completely the importance of football in the South and in the state of Louisiana. There's been some concerns and through investigations and allegations towards specific schools, there hasn't been any follow-up, there hasn't been a report. It's, uh, there's, no, been no, there's been no communication, Mr. Bonine. If there's been a complaint filed, let's stop right there. When the complaint is filed, it's not an anonymous letter. It's communication. And I truly believe as an educational leader, as a principal, having said in the central office, we want to try to resolve any problems that we have or allegations or investigations at the lowest level of investigation, which would be at the sites, school to school. I truly hope that all of you come together today, you're sitting in the same room, Let's exchange business cards today or numbers we'll use in the directory on our website to communicate, not that you haven't. Again, I'm just telling you what the perception is. And unfortunately for some, the perception is reality. There's been allegations that the LSSAA avoids those tough decisions. I find that hard to believe knowing the staff that I have that you have put into place or the executive committee has put into place and those compliance officers that I've had the privilege to meet as I travel across the state and they're in this room today as part of our staff to do those investigations. We're aware of the phone tree. It's amazing how when a compliance officer shows up at this school to check those files, before that individual leaves the parking lot, they made a phone call to the next school said they're on their way. That's okay. We're communicating. We want to make sure everybody's accountable. And I mentioned it before about the institutional integrity. And if we all choose and vow to, to monitor this book that we put together, I think a lot of the problems would go away. Pretty simplistic, but think about it. And for those who've had a chance to try to read these rules and massage the interpretation, well, it's 
It's amazing how you know our phone number when there's a problem going on, but you can't call us when it comes to, to interpreting that. Which leads me to the next piece. Sometimes you get mixed messages, mixed communications. All needs to be addressed. Have you heard me say anything positive yet? Well, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <clears throat> the contradicting statements coming from the LHSAA, the mixed messages, and I've heard about meetings just like this one where requests were made and maybe something didn't happen. I like following through because in my world, uh, you implement something, you need to follow through with that. Uh, I, I guess it's like buying that car and, and uh, you may make sure you maintain, you know, maintain that maintenance record, but follow through. I guess it's that aftermarket piece that I, I, I want to try to make sure you understand with me. A lot of people like to build, but not many like to do maintenance. And I truly believe I'm one of those maintenance guys, and then, as I said before, and boys, this come back to haunt me, the proof will be in the pudding. But that's what's going to be, and you will only know that until you give me that opportunity. The overriding focus now has been about the playoff piece. And now it's time for me to take this jacket off as the guy from the outside and just play proudly my logo as your new executive director of the LHSAA. Proposals that I've seen that are going to be voted on today, taking a look at today, all have merit. They all have a form of merit for what needs to be tried to be done. But it's a repair piece, in my opinion, at this point. The split happened two years ago. Every year we come back and want to implement something else to kind of make it better. I understand that because I've worn out the whiteboard theory with all of you. You're tired of hearing it, but I'm going to bring it up again. But when we get to the point today when we have to make that decision, I ask that you not hamstring me, tie my hands, or give me something I haven't had a chance to get my hands and my mind around on where we want to take it. I said before, I couldn't be a principal today. The responsibility you have for your teaching faculty, your custodial help, your classified personnel, all the students every day to walk into the school, which by the way, the good news is, the students haven't figured out that they've got you outnumbered. Thank the Lord. So keep doing what you're doing because we haven't read about you yet that they've taken over. So you're doing a good job there. But in seriousness, the responsibilities you have today with the accountability reports, the implementation of the new shiny penny, the implementation of this curriculum, the testing, uh, all the data you have to uh, uh, disseminate uh, and put together to prevent or to prevent the, the uh, non-education of students to get to the point where you're showing that you are uh, a progressing school. And I didn't talk about staff yet, evaluations, all the stuff you have to do with that. You've got enough to do. And I truly believe why I'm going with all of this is you've got enough to do without having to worry about athletics, which you love when you wouldn't be here. But you have a lot of stuff you need to do and I want you to give us the ability to work with your coaches and your athletic directors and this office with my leadership to get this thing straightened out. That we can make a vote on something to get it back to you. That million dollar question has been, well, Eddie, you've asked for time. What does that mean? Well, a year's been thrown out there, but we don't have a year. But I'm gonna give you some hard, not dates, but a timeline so you know you can make me accountable. Last time I counted, was five cameras in the back of the room, and gentlemen right here taking my picture. So I think someone's gonna know what we did and what we said in here today. From the day I take office, that first part of March, we have state basketball. I'll get in here, get unpacked as best as I can, and I'll meet y'all in Lake Charles. 45 days from the day that I take office, we're going to establish a committee. 
to review all the stuff we've been talking about. At that time, I truly believe it's for us to forget about all the noise around us, ignore that, and change that, and focus on the task at hand. Quote Tom Brady via Coach Belichick. I thought it was a good one. I heard another one yesterday, I'm not going to bring it out to the lakes, I'd like to leave this thing on a lighter note. Had to do something with a horse and a giraffe. <laughs> the committee composition, recommendation only from me. Superintendents, public, non-public. Principals, public, non-public. Coaches, public, non-public. Athletic directors, public, non-public. Hold on to your hats. I know they're in session. Maybe a couple of legislators. Let's get them to the table. These are just recommendations. I just saw some of you blink going, he's crazy. These are just recommendations. But I wanted to give you that timeline number one. With a target of 25 to 30 days after that to have that committee that you're going to help me choose by working through staff. And I was telling like that principal role, which one of your VPs you want to give cheerleaders to? Not by, I'm not going to anybody with that. I'm just saying, you know, it's, uh, sometimes there's some problems with cheerleaders. And you can see that mom coming down the sidewalk. And that's like that, and you just got to think real quick on your feet. If you get on your radio and you say, Mr. Geis, could you come to the front office, please? Mr. Geis, could you come to the front office, please? I say that because I'm not real sure. I am. Uh, I haven't decided, and, and Mr. Vic Bonaview, please excuse me for saying this, don't know whether as your executive director I should facilitate that committee, step aside, or I will help lead it, but maybe it should be shared or work with someone else, and maybe I should allow one of my staff members to help coordinate that piece. Haven't got to the logistical piece there, but the bottom line, what you all wanted to hear is a timeline. We're gonna get a committee, we're gonna meet, and anything that may be brought up today, anything I hope is tabled today, will be something we're going to discuss. Let's massage that. Let's give it a chance to marinate on that. And that's something we can give to the principals, coaches, athletic directors, all our stakeholders around the time school starts. So it gives us some time to beat it up, whiteboard, Erase, change, do what we need to. So when we come back to this meeting, we're ready. And for the first time in the history of the association, that vote will take less than five minutes. Because we all know where we're at now. Is everybody going to agree? No. No. But I want to get the bulk of you to at least move this thing forward for what I feel is the best interest and you feel is the best interest for all of the students, with in mind your community. It's a give and take, people. You know that. All I've heard about is the history, including those individuals who were inducted into the hall about how they love the LHSAA, and we are approaching that 100th year. Jim, you didn't sit on that first board, did you? Just second I was BJ was there. <laughs> and to get this thing kicked off in a good manner, I would like to, and I'm not making light of it, but maybe we should have a little fundraiser. How about, well, first of all, I found out a real muddy road, or if it's raining and now you're out in the bayou, a real muddy road is referred to as gumbo. Have you heard that before? Obviously. I had heard that. Because look at me, I know what gumbo is. So maybe we should sell some raffle tickets and put on a special event where we could have Vic Bonafi and BJ Rosado mud wrestling. How about that? Anybody, let me show of hands, how many people would watch that one? Raise your hands. <laughs> Mr. Alexander, you're in charge of that fundraiser down there, okay? That's the way it works. So you see there's a time frame and, and, and a timeline for you, some information, positive comments, Mr. Bonafi. I didn't vote for the split, but you know now that it's happened, it's not a bad thing. Mr. Bonite, I voted for the split. I'm not so sure I should have done that. 
But there's been positives on both sides, negatives on both sides, which tells me, as I mentioned before, that the theory, the philosophy, we keep trying to fix it a little bit, but the thought processes across this room, including all the way to the back of the room, have been all over the map as much as I've had the privilege to travel over the state of Louisiana. <laughs> Solutions, the timeline, our calendar. That's the best I can do for you today. I hope that you give me the opportunity to lead you in the direction we, I think, we think we should go, and I think I've heard that from you. In closing, this is just an analogy and a reference, by no means an intent of comparison, please. On more than one time throughout the Bible, it talks about a shepherd and, and their flock. If the shepherd is behind that flock, a couple of things could possibly be the case. Shepherd is pushing the flock in a direction they may not want to go, or they're not sure where they're going. But if a good shepherd is in front of the flock, has that trust of all of those individuals there, and goes that way, or that way, or that way, they fall. And I truly hope you give me the opportunity to get out in front of this process and get something we really need in place that we can make these meetings more enjoyable because I was told kiddingly I said this this room and this red carpet gives a whole new meaning to the red carpet I just hope it's not bloodshed slaughtered by the last executive director that stood up here and said what I just said thank you so much I appreciate it God bless you God bless you